when he does get the call, he will be fantasy relevant. Yes, he will. So keep your eye on those health reports. Let's monitor Dustin May's innings. Let's see how many innings he pitches this year. Because the longer he goes without getting the call, the more the Dodgers can utilize his skill and talents once he actually gets the call to the major leagues. I talked a little earlier about the Pirate-Red Sox game, but I didn't mention any of the Red Sox players, so I'd be remiss if I didn't do that. I think it's important to note a hitter or two and also a pitcher who pitched really well yesterday for the Red Sox. First of all, in the hitting department, Michael Chavez played second base and went two for two, and he's in a dogfight for playing time. It would not be a surprise for the Red Sox to utilize Chavez at first or second base or both as we get into the season. Uh, Also, Duran, the center fielder, he's hitting 625. I know it's early, but I've watched him play at single A a couple years ago. Last year it was, rather. He wasn't at single A very long, called up to double A. He can fly. He is so fast, and he went two for three yesterday now hitting 625, and he hit his first spring home run yesterday as well. But here's the player I really want to talk about, Martin Perez. Remember him? Twin pitcher, ranger pitcher, okay. Two innings on the mound yesterday, started the game for Boston. No earned runs, only one hit, and he struck out three batters. Pretty strong, huh? Staunch pitching there from Perez. And reports that I read this morning also said Perez was hitting 94 to 95 miles per hour on the speed gun. Bad for a lefty who doesn't throw that hard, supposedly. Ron Renicky said after the game they want to work with Perez's pitch mix. I'll get the word. The P's are giving me a tongue twister, huh? Work with Perez's pitch mix this spring. So hopefully he can be the pitcher he was the first two months of last year. Do you remember Martin Perez last year when the season started? A lot of talk about his changeup, and he was owning batters for Minnesota. Well, that's what they're hoping to recapture in Boston this year. So working a mixture of pitches. Remember, his most devastating pitches is change. And they want to get him to use his changeup more often and his cutter less frequently. Renicky said, as I just said, his changeup is outstanding. Well, if it's outstanding, throw it. And he did yesterday. And he struck out three in two innings. So, good outing there. Look at some more injured players. Freddie Galvis still has not played in a game after the Reds acquired him in the offseason. He has yet to play this spring. But... There's a report by Mark Sheldon of MLB.com that, quote, it will be real quick after the first day off on Tuesday. End of quote. How about that? So he has the benefit of not having a true competitor at shortstop in Cincinnati. Now, prospect Jose Garcia homered twice earlier in the week, but he's likely to begin the season at double A. Galvis is going to be your shortstop, and he's scheduled to start begin games next week. Now, Sonny Gray started against the Mariners yesterday. He went two innings, gave up two hits, no walks, and struck out three batters. Way to go, Sonny Gray. And I look at the hitting of the Reds. Now they lost the game 5-3. to three. So I'm looking for players in the box score who look significant. And the only one I see that did anything worth a toot was Nick Castellanos, who went one for three yesterday, had an RBI. Castellanos, I think, is going to be a beast this year in fantasy. I just, that ballpark, that lineup, I know it's early. Nobody's hitting Harley right now except Miles Straw for Houston. But he's going to hit. He is a hitter. That's why they got him. They know the park. He knows he can hit. And he's going to tear it up. And I can't wait to see the number. I think he's a 30 30 homer, 100 RBI guy this year. I really do. 
How about the Cubs yesterday playing the Royals split squad team? The Cubs beat the Royals eight to nothing yesterday. And there was some, you know, let's talk about two players hitting the ball there, shall we? One that we expect and one that's trying to make a living. Okay, who, who, who do we expect? We expect Javi Baez to hit. And he went two for three yesterday, including his third inning, first home run of the spring. But here's a player that's intriguing to me. Jason Kipnis. Yes, remember Jason Kipnis, former All-Star Jason Kipnis with the Cleveland Indians, who's now with the Chicago Cubs, who yesterday went two for three and hit his first double of the spring? Oh, do you feel in the air the spring winds blowing that rejuvenate the old, that being one Jason Kipnis? Can you imagine if he were to have a good spring, stick with the Cubs, play second base. He can run, he can hit, he's got some pop. We'll see. But he went two for three yesterday. Hope does spring in the spring eternal. Padres beat the Indians, his old team yesterday, eight to nothing. And one of Lenny's boys, Will Myers, that's right, Lenny, Will Myers, I'm going to talk about him too. Hit his first homer of the spring in the sixth inning. And let's talk about Mr. Myers, who DH yesterday, who went two for three. Yes, two for three with that home run. Really the highlight of the hitting, if you will. Frenchy Cordero, Andrea's boy, 0 for two. Pitching-wise, my boy, Chris Paddock. Two innings, one hit, no walks, no runs. And three big strikeouts. I think Paddock is just a talent. Uh, The problem with Paddock, they're not going to win this year probably. They're going to shut him down. And he's going to have start, skip because of his age. All of that stuff that they do. But they do. And so you know to expect that. And I think that tempers where Paddock will go in drafts. Maybe I draft different than everyone else. I probably do. But not only do I look at players who first have opportunity, there are three categories of players with me. Here you go. Here are the secrets. So who's going to get the opportunity? Who's going to play on a winning team? Because I think a winning team is very important. Why is that? Winning teams score more runs than losing teams. It's common. I'm not, no rocket science here. Right? Winning teams score more fantasy gold than losing team players. In every every way around, you score more runs, pitchers win more games. Losing teams, pitchers give up more runs, pitchers give up, get losses. Players don't hit as much average, don't drive in as many runs. I mean, it's, it's, it's one of those. So I look for winning teams. And then finally, I look for teams and players who are going to be relevant in September because I could have the best fantasy team. I did this one year. I had the best fantasy team from opening day till August 31st. Hands down. This was like three years ago. And then in September, they start sitting players down. The winning teams who clinched and they want to give their players a rest. And they absolutely slaughtered me winning and preventing me from winning a fantasy championship. Thank you very much. So I want teams who contend. What do you think? Are the Dodgers going to run away with the West this year? I don't know. But if they do, bet your bell and dollar the last week of the season, you can forget Walker Buehler giving you a whole lot. Does that affect me drafting Walker Buehler? You can bet it does. Now, what if there's a dogfight in the American League Central between the Twins and, say, the Indians and maybe even the White Sox? Love it. Love players like that in a fantasy dogfight, reality dogfight. They're playing every day. Do you hear me? And I want those guys on my fantasy team in September when I can win a championship. I don't have to finish first in the regular season. 
I just have to finish the regular season so I'm in the playoffs, whatever my playoff format is. So look at your teams who are being do- – will the Braves win the East by a big margin? Probably not. Which makes Acuna, which makes Albies, which makes those guys valuable. How about the Phillies? Might they be in the fight? Yes. And that's why Harper could be such a big fantasy player this year. How about in the Central Division? The Cubs, the Reds. That division's up for grabs. They're, they're teams that I think the Reds will win the division. I don't think they're going to run away with it. And I think if you get team players on teams like that, that's what you want for fantasy. Rocky players? Sure, because they score so many runs in that ballpark. Yesterday they didn't. They were in spring training. They beat the Rangers 4-3. to three. Hitting-wise... Well, not a lot, but it's early. They only got six hits as a team. Blackman got one, Arenado got one. Texas, what happened there? Spectacular. Duffy, playing shortstop, got two hits. Colby Allard pitching for the Rangers. Two shutout innings starting for them yesterday. That's what I take away from that game. He pitched really well. Remember, former Atlanta Brave, great prospect. Traded over to Texas last year. Two innings starting the game yesterday, and Colby Allard was on his game. And he's a left-hander playing in Texas in a newly vamped stadium, and I really like Colby Allard. I really like the potential he brings, the moxie he brings. He's a good player. He could be a great fantasy asset drafted last this year. The ballpark atmosphere, the elements are different in Texas. Pitchers is air conditioned. They're not going to be so worn out. Just thinking. So those are some of the players injured that are, you know, either trying to get nursed back to health or, as in Gio Carlos Stanton's case, just finding out they're going to be shut down for a while. And so take these reports into consideration. Do your homework. As you hear these reports, where was Gio Carlos Stanton on your draft board? He should now be scratched off or at least dropped down. Where was Luis Severino on your draft board? Unless you're in a redraft league. If you're not in a redraft league, I know where Severino should be now. He should be a pencil erase mark or a line through. There's no reason at all to have Luis Severino on your draft board at all unless you're in a redraft league where you have keepers and you believe that he can help you next year. Otherwise, cut him and put somebody else on that draft board. Now, I want to talk about some reality guesswork here. What do the Yankees do? You know, they're not just down one starting pitcher, Severino. They're down two. They don't have Big Maple. And they also don't have Herman until probably, what, late May? So no Paxton, no Severino, no Herman. I think the Yankees, from everything I'm reading, Brian Cashman and management, they're going to try to see if the players they have can cut the mustard. But what if they don't? Look, the Yankees didn't go out and give Garrett Cole $325 million not to try to win the World Series this year. Okay? So is there a trade? If they need a trade... Who might the trade partners be? And I'm going to give you two to me that are obvious. And they're the same team. And it's the San Francisco Giants who need to rebuild. And they need offense so, so desperately. Clint Frazier. Did you hear me? They need offense so, so desperately. Clint Frazier. And they have two pitchers. That for one year could be really tantalizing to the Yankees. 
Let's talk about Jeff some.